Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. We're just a couple of casual gamers in love that love doing some reaction videos together. We really do. And so uh, we're checking out The Engoodening of No Man's Sky. So this is something that was requested uh, in our Winter Request Fest video that we did, and uh, it didn't win, but it got close to it. Also was recommended by one of our moderators, so mm -hmm. that's why you know it got a little bit extra of a, of a boost and thought, you know, we, we check it out. I've heard about it. We've had it on our request list for a while, but it's a longer video, so you know, it takes a little bit longer to, you know, it takes, it's an investment. Ken's heard of it. I probably have, but my brain's not connecting it. So like, my face of like, hmm, was because I have no idea what I'm in store for right now. I mean, I really don't, I mean, I've only heard of the title as far as people requesting it before. Mm. I have no idea what this is like necessarily about. So we're gonna go ahead and, uh, and, and check that out. Okay. Sponsored by that game everyone loves. <laughs> Scientists are racing to unlock the secrets of the cosmos. Questions we once thought impossible to answer are within our grasp. Where does the sun go at night? Is math related to science? If the universe is so big, then why won't it fight me? <laughs> As we look further into the universe, we see light from distant stars, eons old, perhaps hundreds, even thousands of miles away. Hold on, can I get a zoom in on that? You bet I can. This is one of the world's most powerful telescopes. Initiating six times zoom. Can this baby do seven? I can do you one better. Maneuvering to eight times zoom. Pressure rising, holding steady. I can see it, unblur. It won't hold. Get me 8.5 times. That's how the genius time You're a watermark man. on it. Upscale it to 4K. The helium tanks will go critical. Opening the blind. Hold this steady. Uncropping and increasing aspect ratio. Now, punch it. There it is. Life on another world. What? And to <laughs> think, we owe it all to one indie development studio. Hello Games. I was like, kangaroos doing that, Sam? <laughs> I don't know. Or donkeys? <laughs> I don't know what I just saw. At the beginning. Will Smith? Yeah, it's rewind time. Okay, the year is 2009, Guildford, England. There's a man named Sean Murray, and he's just founded a company called Hello Games. Sean and the boys are working hard on a brand new IP called Joe Danger. Oh! 2010 AD, the game just came out. It's a success. They're a small team, but they are ambitious. Let's do something bigger, said Sean. Let's reach for the stars. How about Joe Danger 2? Brilliant. It's 2012. <laughs> Joe Danger 2 has just come out. But uh, that one doesn't perform as well. Mm -hmm. We need to do something even bigger than Joe Danger 2. Joe Danger 3? No, no. Even more out of this world, something no man has done before? Uh, Joe Danger the mobile game? Yes! <laughs> and that came out in 2014. Seriously guys, biggest thing you can think of. Uh, I'm just a stock image, dude. Why don't you think of something? <laughs> Sean pondered for a moment, then turned and looked wistfully into the mirror. Reflected back was the visage of Neil deGrasse Tyson. If you're going to make a space game, first person has never been done before. How about that? I'm going up in orbit to repair the Hubble telescope. Mm. So that's not a knife. Who are you going to have sex with? How much microwaves are coursing through your body now? <laughs> <laughs> the planet, said Murray. Hmm? Uh, t space game, procedural generation, planet. Okay, that sounds good. Yes, yes, we all agree. So they set to work, cobbled together a prototype, and by VGX 2013, they are ready to announce another new IP. No Man's Sky. Check it out, check it out. Oh, this is special. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's 2014, and it's E3 hype time. No Man's Sky has promised to be a game like no other. A practically boundless experience, vibrant with life and color and things to explore. What's over there? You'll have to be the one to discover it. And then, wow, look at that big f***ing dinosaur, holy shit. <laughs> and a moment later, we're in space, having a battle amongst a giant fleet. Claim a planet as your own. Explore the galaxy with your friends. Okay, that's it. This is going to be the best game ever, you guys. It even won awards for its hype. Oh my god. And it will release in June 2016. The hype train was officially loading up and ready to chug out of the station. At every stop of the journey, there would be press junkets talking about the amazing scale of the game. Spread across 18 quintillion planets, it's so vast that by the time you finish exploring it all, I would have two new videos published. Sean <laughs> himself was doing the interviews, because who is better to talk about the game than the lead guy himself? He went from interview to interview, and with each question, the answers he gave raised people's expectations of the game's scope. Can you land on a comet? Yeah, at the moment you can land on asteroids. You could encounter other players. Can you grief other players? <laughs> a little bit. They're literally building your own like massively multiplayer world that's procedurally right. generated. Sand planets like in June, rivers, walking sentinels, hacking. So sophisticated that light diffracts through through the atoms, they had to redevelop the whole periodic table to make it work. What? Even Elon Musk was hyped for it. <laughs> Two years go by. It's early 2016, and that hype train is really moving now. <laughs> Perhaps one of the biggest in video game history. Reddit was shoveling most of the gamer fuel. Skeptics and naysayers <laughs> are treated as ballast and thrown from the carriage doors. Oh, Pre-orders open, and they are doing very well. The date is booked in. Some are even taking the day off work. So much hype there is that... Uh-oh. Jason Schreier of the soon-to-be-defunct Kotaku is about to spoil the party. He announces a delay. From June 2016 uh -oh. to August. Oh my god! Liar, the incensed audience cries. <laughs> Please be quiet, they said. And death threats, too. But he's 100% oh right. A week later, the delay is officially announced. Ooh, sorry, lads. We need more polish, said Sean in his usual accent. To that, Sean received some death threats too, by the way. Oh Although God. he didn't take them as seriously or go to the police. Yet. Oh, Sometimes foreshadowing is relatively obvious. <laughs> the impatient crowd relaxed a bit and said, Fine, we will wait. But we expect a level of polish... No man has ever seen. Speaking of waiting. Shadow Man here. Have you heard of Rady Shady? My wife died in a plane crash. Hey, hey, hey. Let's get serious for a moment. Raid isn't just a game with 15 million downloads in the last six months. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. <laughs> Think differently. Play Raid. Different as well. Differently. Achieve your dreams. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. You've contracted raids. That's good. Congratulations. Oh, it's Gorgorub of the Undead Horde. My life for Nessu. You just collected one of over 400 champions. Why, hello there. Have you heard about the online RPG PvP? <laughs> it's extremely well reviewed on the Play Store. <laughs> oh. oh, you remind me of my wife. Raid is more than just a game. It's a reassuring pat on the back from your dad. It's a warm bowl of soup on a cold night. It's one last dance at your wife's funeral. Oh if you God. haven't played in the arena yet, I'm going to break into your house. You're all getting Raid for Christmas, kids. Yay! And if you download now, kids, using the link in the description below, you can get an extra 50k silver and an epic champion. Wow, wow you're, you're the, the best, best dad, dad ever. ever. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, mom's dead? 
Braid Shadow Legends. Oh. Add over. So let's talk about the team in charge of all that polishing. It's small, tiny. In fact, I haven't been able to find a smaller team behind a AAA release. All of these expectations are on the shoulders of just six people, Damn. expanding to a team of 15 by the end of production. Oh God. July. It's just a couple of weeks until the release date. Whatever the state of the game by now, however much it's finished, that's what's going out. The Hello Games team celebrates with this iconic image. The quintessential soy face. They're exhausted. Look at what video game production does to a man. God, what's wrong with your face? Nonetheless, they continue, working on the day one patch. And, uh-oh. Sean, if your game isn't coming out for another two weeks, then why is there a box copy on eBay? That's right. It's a leak. Someone broke the embargo and is selling early access to the highest bidder. And the bids start rolling in. It reaches $1,300 US. Sold to some guy with the Reddit handle Damien. He gets his hands on it and starts uploading footage to YouTube and Daily Motion. What? What the frick? Said Sean and Sony. <laughs> Damien finished it a lot quicker than expected, but he gave it a decent review. There are things I don't like, there are things I like, but at the end of the day, when I say to myself, what is this game supposed to be? This, what I'm looking at right here, this is what the game is supposed to be. He noted a few problems, but said he was optimistic that they would be ironed out with the day one patch. Uh, Sean, it's another leak. Some retailers broke the official release date, journalists too, and they started streaming playthroughs of the game. What the that sucks. Sony tried yeah. to DMCA all these videos, but their aim was terrible. Round of applause everyone. We've officially become No Man's Censored by Sony. Our new story from earlier this week about No Man's Sky leaks has been hit with a copyright strike on YouTube. They went bumbling around from platform to platform, just taking down any video <laughs> that even talked about the leak or showed the trailer footage. But it was too late. The footage had people talking more skeptically about the game. <gasps> Especially because there were no early review copies. That's bad. And it was looking like the weight of all these expectations had become too much. And the whole thing was about to give. Yeah. Oh no. It's all Space Monkey. <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> here. We've all bought the game and we're fucking hyped. Uh, here we go, lads. Oh dear lord, um, it isn't finished. Uh, hello, Sean. It is me, the auditor of games. I used to work at an astronomy lab, but don't <laughs> worry about that. It seems like you've made a lot of promises. Promises that uh, you have not kept. Let's go through the checklist. Have you got any large-scale joinable space battles? Nobody would want that. Uh, ring plans? Uh, no. No. Fine. Well, at least let me play as a trader. Some may call this junk. Me, I call them... Uh, no. Those sand planets from June look nice. Think I might... <laughs> Please, Sean, there must be rivers. No. No, it's, no, it's not. Animals interact with each other in the environment? Uh, no. No. Packs of walking sentinels, Sean. No. I'm literally crying right now. <laughs> Do I even ask whether I can play as a space pirate? No. No. Attributes. You picked the wrong house, fool! Oh. <laughs> Fly between star systems manually. But nobody's actually done it yet. If I can maneuver like in the trailer, I'll still be happy. No. Well, day-night cycles determined by the orbit of the sun. Yeah. Really? Uh, no. no. <laughs> Land on an asteroid, radio chat, and name your ship, hacking, portals, all that stuff about the elements, Sean. Uh, no. This is not good, Sean. This is very not good. Yeah. And ironically, the only bugs this game doesn't have are the butterflies in the demo.
Um, <laughs> Buried buildings, aggressive emojis, tractor beam malfunctions, animal husbandry, oil slick world, <laughs> raining grass, retarded animals doing retarded things. Ships interiors disappear, first person mode as a gun. That's not how flying works. That's my only means of transportation, leaving the planet. Take off. <laughs> really take off. Holes in the map. Holes oh. in my graphics card. Whole lot of nothing from down here. Textures bugging out, animals bugging out. Animals break dance. Oh, Look at these wow. busy hands. Yeah. Hello, Hello there. there. And a couple of unrequested ejector seats. Sounds like you rushed it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's a lot of stuff. I get the picture. No wait, poor graphics rendering. Some can't even <laughs> start the game. Frame rate issues, constant crashes. Major publications are having trouble playing the game on their machines. Even the best 1080 Ti's are stuttering. Alt tabbing? That's a guaranteed crash. Desktop notifications? That's a crash. Playing the game? That's a crash. <laughs> Changing options in the game without restarting? You'll get this. And if you got the pre-order version with the bonus spaceship, you might have a problem. Your special ship already comes with a hyperdrive inside it. Great, right? No, because you have to craft it in order to finish the tutorial missions. And if you haven't finished the tutorial missions, you can't leave the star system. So <laughs> until they patch it, you're stranded. That's why I give my kids No Man's Sky. That <laughs> fool! <laughs> My ship's in bits! <laughs> okay, thank you. Just a quick note about how high expectations were for this game and just how many people bought it on release, myself included. Over three quarters of a million purchases on Steam at launch. Damn. It's the single best Random selling Jeffrey. game on the PlayStation Store that month. And the large proportion of people who bought it in the hopes of playing with their friends, well, you're in for a surprise. This one is a literal game changer. Is it even possible to meet up with your friends in No Man's Sky? The answer is absolutely yes, it's possible. On multiple occasions, Sean said it was definitely in the game. Will you be able to play with your friends? Yeah. Can you run into other people, other players on the game? Yes. But then just before the release, Sean posted this cryptic tweet. To be super clear, No Man's Sky is not a multiplayer game. Please don't go in looking for that experience. Oh, what? Great. So there's no multiplayer function. But then the next line contradicts that. Because the chances of two players ever crossing paths in a universe this big is pretty much zero. Ah. Oh, so it is multiplayer. You just have to overcome this finding each other hurdle. So you're telling me there's a chance. Yeah! Right? No, it's more confusing than that. Because the box doesn't mention online play, just network features. And the collector's edition had its online play icon stickered over. So customers are going, which one is it, Sean? Just tell us if it has multiplayer or it doesn't have multiplayer. Sean wouldn't give any answers. No! But after hundreds of thousands of purchases, people soon took it upon themselves to find out. Despite the claims that it would be so improbable. Chances that are incredibly rare, just because of the size and probability. On the very first day, two people noticed they were only four star systems from one another, and they met up on the same planet in a live stream. That's a great oh video. A black pillow. Our, yeah, our streams are, are exactly lined up. If you go look at my stream, we're looking at the exact same area right now if you don't Yep, that's the same spot. And they can't see each other. I'm alone! <laughs> that settles it. It's not not multiplayer because it's so big. It's not multiplayer because it's just not fucking multiplayer. <laughs> and this led to quite a revolt. What did Sean have to say about all this? So amazing, two people found each other on the first day. That has blown Mind. my mind. <laughs> So why can't we see other players in game? Wow, so many of you playing. Yeah, Sean, but what? Truly what? amazing. <laughs> My mind is blown. <laughs> oh, man, that's bad. So what's yeah. the game actually like then? Is it any good? That is a difficult thing to say. Well, <laughs> it certainly is stylish and pretty, and there are a lot of places to explore. 
but that doesn't mean there's much to find. In fact, the game boils down to a very simple loop. Hold down the trigger to pick up resources, deal with a full inventory, get an upgrade, leave the planet, go to another planet. Hold down the trigger, deal with a full inventory, get an upgrade, leave the planet, go to another planet. Hold down the trigger, deal with a full inventory, leave the planet, go to another planet, deal with a full inventory, get an upgrade, leave the planet. Just so That's it. Sixty dollars, ladies and gentlemen. Refuel your multi-tool, refuel your life support, refuel a separate part of your multi-tool that shoots bullets instead of the mining beam, refuel your launch thrusters. It's busy work that makes it look like you have something to do. It's not real. How dare you! <laughs> What followed was one of the most dramatic crashes in player numbers in gaming history. Sales in the UK fell by 81% in the second week. Concurrent players on Steam dropped from 212,000 in August to just over 2,000 by September, oh, crap. And fewer than 1,000 oh, by October. And what followed that was perhaps the biggest pylon in gaming history. Reviewers on YouTube panned the game. Oh, for fuck's sake! You done fucked it up! I had no hype, and I can tell you that, even without that disappointment, this game is hot garbage. <laughs> Has anyone coined Sean Mourinho yet? Numerous times within the first two hours of the game, I kept saying, this is it, fuck this shit. <laughs> Reviewers in the media were almost as harsh. Devastating realization that most of the crafting, combat, and other activities you do on and between those planets ranges between bemusing and outright bad. The criticism was deafening. <laughs> And a lot of it really funny and creative. Kirby Cat made a video that captured the sentiment of that day. And if you haven't seen it yet, you're missing out. So people are furious. The game is boring. And soon people discover that complaining about the game is actually more fun than playing it. <laughs> I'm now three and a half hours into the tutorial, pretty much. So they started complaining about it like they were grinding for an achievement. This sucks. Fucking Minecraft in space. Many people made compilations <laughs> of all the unfulfilled promises. One guy on the subreddit compiled a big list of all the missing features. Front page. Got a defense for No Man's Sky? Enjoy your downvote. In <laughs> fact, the entire No Man's Sky subreddit was in such disarray it had to be locked. So by the end of the month, Metacritic was like scrolling through a bowl of Cheerios. By October, it was one of the worst rated games on Steam, with an <laughs> aggregate of mostly negative from more than 70,000 reviews. <laughs> the outrage of the game was headline news for weeks on dozens of games news publications, and the price on eBay and Amazon and secondhand at GameStop was crashing through the floor. The guy that paid thirteen hundred dollars. But the beatings had only just begun. The demo planet was data mined and found to be, of course, totally scripted and not randomly generated at all. I've just got to pick one of these at random. If anything horrible goes wrong, just keep in mind that I've not been here before. It wasn't some level that we built or something like that, even though I think it looks quite nice in places. People watching this would wonder why you're showing this area again. Like, what's so special about demoing the game on this planet? Oh, no, no, it's just a place that looks nice. No, <laughs> bad Murray. I could have ended the demo with some, you know, pre-scripted crazy thing that would happen. You know what I mean? The normal thing of like, and then a monster emerges from behind the mountains, you know? People see what's going on with the game and feel lied to. This is false advertising, they say, and angry customers start scoping out a lawsuit. Ooh. On September 28th, the ASA busts through the door and goes, Yep, too many complaints. We're going to investigate. But then soon after, the ASA cleared them of any legal wrongdoing. Technically, the only thing they're interested in is what's on the back of the box, what's on the store page, and what's on the Steam page. So it's technically not false advertising. But of course, technically not illegal doesn't mean much to an angry audience. Yep. October 28th, Hello Games Twitter is hacked. The hacker posts, <laughs> No Man's Sky was a mistake, and is shitting on the game in the replies. <laughs> Turns out Sean didn't use two-factor authentication on his LinkedIn, and that's how they got in. They also sent discrediting emails to journalists, which they knew would rile people up if published. Some people even show up to their offices to take photos and knock on the door, even at night and on the weekend. They posted empty pictures of the office, so naturally out of context, this started rumors that Hello Games simply took the money and ran. This in addition to numerous bomb and death threats during that period. Those ones Sean did have That's to crazy. take seriously. 
uh, regular you adventure for police story, and then? Scotland yeah. Yard and things like that. And while Sony didn't quite throw them under the bus, it was more like a <laughs> gentle push under a minivan. When Sony <laughs> President Shohei Yoshida admitted that Hello Games did not have a great PR strategy for No Man's Sky. The press took the ball with that one and ran. But despite all of this, all of the negative press, they were actually nominated for a couple of awards. But by this point, Murray and the other members of Hello Games were so downtrodden and so sure they weren't going to win that they opted to go elsewhere for dinner. <laughs> and the Innovation Award goes to... No Man's Sky. <laughs> Oh, bro. This lovely trophy going once. Whoops. I'm going to accept this on the, uh, behalf of Hello Games, and congratulations to them. And I'm going to walk off stage like I planned that whole thing. By this point, you've got to feel just a little bit sorry for them. Yeah. And Ooh. then what followed that was the final straw death for me. No particular incident but a lack of incidents. Silence. Over three months of not a damn word from No Man's Sky. Where are they? Where is my refund? Where is Murray? Shouted into the void. The game was over. And it was dead. Three months later. is 2000 AD. Sean has just graduated from university and is headed into the big wide world. He rises up the ranks at a number of studios, eventually working as a technical lead for Black and technical director for Burnout 3. When Burnout's developer is bought by EA, he is in his late 20s. And he and three of his buddies decide to leave and start their own studio. Hello Games. This was a risky venture. Uh, so we'd done this incredibly foolish thing of like quitting our jobs and then we had to sit down and try and decide what the game was going to be. Together they create their first title, Joe Danger. They work on this game day and night. In fact, even once they were arrested in their own office because the police thought they were there to rob the place. Because who would be working at 11 p.m. on a Sunday night? <laughs> but they had to work that hard. Like any startup, it was a huge financial and professional risk. They had no income. They were working in a tiny room above an old tile shop, living off savings. And to keep the project running, Sean even sold his house. So we oh, wow. made a really tough and probably, at the time, seemed really foolish decision. Um, it's kind of almost embarrassing for me to talk about. Uh, I sold my house and just basically went all in and, and funded what we were doing, which is not something I would recommend anyone <laughs> else do. But by June 8th, 2010, they had done it. The game was good. And they could breathe a sigh of relief because on the very first day it hit the PlayStation Store, they made their money back. Two years later, Joe Danger 2 was released. It was not the commercial success they had hoped for, and they didn't want to just keep pumping out sequels. That was a trap big players in the industry had fallen into. In his spare time, Sean started working on a prototype for a procedurally generated game. They took another gamble and scrambled to get a trailer out in time to present at VGX 2013. So the project is official now, and the pressure is on. Around this time, Sean is also looking to start a family. <laughs> Concurrent to all this development, he would go on to have three kids. So the weight of responsibility wow. is really piling on. Yeah. But their hard work will pay off, as they're finally going to have a chance for some R&R &R around Christmas. They woke up to find their homes flooded, their cars submerged, and their plans for Christmas Day very much ruined. Bad news. Rain. 
Rain and flooding in the south of England, right around the Hello Games office. They are completely inundated and they return from their holidays to find laptops floating around at oh. waist height. But some good news, they yeah. hadn't lost any data. So they pull together, soldier on, development continues. So there they are working in a damp office and then ding dong, Ooh, who's at the door? It's Danish mathematician, Dr. Johan Gerlis. He's seen the game and he says, they are using my super formula in perfect English and there is a potential for a lawsuit. Sean says they didn't and he can prove it. So they have a meeting and the claim is eventually dropped, lawsuit evaded. So back to work guys, ding dong. It's Sky Television. They've seen the game. You were infringing on our Sky trademark. They said in perfect text to speech. What? They had succeeded in getting Microsoft to change SkyDrive to OneDrive, and they were about to give gamers No Man's One under threat of lawsuit. That is ridiculous. You can't so this lawsuit word. didn't just go away. The threat loomed over them for the next three years. Jeez. Right up until the month before release. So they get back to work and ding dong. It's Sony with some good news for once. We like a game, kid. We want to feature it front and center and make you a big star. This could mean millions of dollars in additional <laughs> revenue. They said, yeah. But along with it, a lot of press for this game would need to be done. Being a small team, they didn't have anyone for PR. They had their designers, they had their developers, and that was about it. So it's up to Murray. Oh God. Sean's in his early 30s now, not super young, but relatively young and inexperienced for this type of media circuit. Yeah. Yeah. This deal with Sony put extra pressure on them. It set deadlines. It's not that it's Sony's fault, but they're locked in now with much less flexibility. Mm. So when May rolls around and they have no option but to delay, even if they wanted to ask for an extra six to 12 months of development, which they really need, it's probably too much to ask for. So they extend from late June to August, only six weeks. From here, you can predict what's gonna to happen to multiplayer and a bunch of other promised features. So here's how the hype happened. Scope of game, time. And here's the line which shows the reality of development. Progress is steady and ends in August 2016. Now here is the line of player expectations. <laughs> it should start out here and follow along the purple, but the overhyping trailer comes out and puts us way up here. This is special! In this trailer, it features a bunch of things that Hello Games thinks they're capable of having in the game by 2016. That's the first big mistake. Then it's announced for PlayStation and it costs $60 and there's a collector's edition. Second, even bigger mistake. <laughs> that puts us all the way up here. And I think this is the main problem because price tags set expectations. Yeah. yeah. For a $60 game, this was seriously barren and disappointing. Now, if they had put it out for $20 as an indie game or an alpha, no problem. But when they gave it the triple A treatment, people rightfully aligned their expectations with other games in that category. That is the main reason customers' expectations were so skewed. Then Murray went to interviews, exacerbating the problem. Every time he mentioned a feature in the game, even in passing, fans set their expectations to triple A heights for that feature. Now, some people think the interviews are the main problem. In my humble opinion, not <laughs> so much. Most people never saw these interviews. It's not that rickety 12-foot ladder Sean's standing on that's the main problem. It's the 900-foot building he's perched it on in the first place. So the obvious solution here would be an official statement. Hey guys, look, don't expect a 10 out of 10. Expect more of a 5 out of 10. <laughs> No, the publisher just sank an enormous investment of marketing and opportunity into the game. What's wrong with you? And that would be a huge middle finger to them. The publisher isn't going to make you hype the shit out of your game, but you can't <laughs> talk it down either. So, it's kind of stuck up there. In some ways, during the interview, he tries to temper expectations, but it's limited. Can you build a space station? No. <laughs> but let's not gloss over the interviews. Sean is a technical guy. He's a developer. He's also the introverted type. And the big lights and the stuff on camera does not come naturally to him. 
Is it super nerve wracking to talk on stage at E3? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, definitely. I personally find going on stage at E3 like the hardest thing I've ever done. That's something that I would have had in a nightmare before. You know what I mean? It's literally the hardest th thing you've ever done. Yeah, you guys make a lot of yeah. eye contact. He seems Still, definitely super He nervous. stepped up mm -hmm. and took interviews for his game from 2013 to 2016. And the main thing people wanted to hear about were the features. Can you have more than so every planet? Will there be wormholes? Right. At what point do you get do you get points or anything? From these interviews, people took Sean to be a liar, a Peter Molyneux, or a chess club member out to sell his game at whatever reputational cost. But I think the truth is more complicated than that. Sean and the team are indie developers working on a new IP. Their project and plans are constantly in flux. They have no idea how large chunks of the game are going to look, especially not a couple of years out from release. And crucially, Sean doesn't understand that something mentioned in 2013, even said in passing, is going to be seen as a promise in the year 2016, even if by then you've decided to cut it from the game. For example, orbiting around the sun. Today has turned it out because the planet has actually rotated on its axis. This originally was in the game, but it caused the player too much confusion. It kept being reported as a bug in the beta, as people left the planet and then returned to find everything different. But nonetheless, into the line compilation it goes. So while they're still essentially formulating the game, the media all want a piece of Sean and to report on features first. Conversely, Sean thinks the reporters might help him to temper down things by emphasizing that Hello Games is an indie studio. But that is not how journalism is done. <laughs> this is how journalism is done. Can you customize the look of your character? Uh, sort of. Full customization confirmed in No Man's Sky. <laughs> periodic table to create atmospheric particles that would diffract light at just the right wavelength. Oh, no. I told you. The press <laughs> kind of operates downstream from the community because things are click driven as to what stories you get served and things like that. But a rumor would surface from Reddit straight to the front page. There's all this hype and the project has increased in scope dramatically and keeps increasing as the months go by until a point. They are close to the deadline and have to delay, and the reality of what they can achieve in the little time remaining is staring them in the face. They know they're not going to be putting out a finished game. They're worried. There's nothing more they can do. That and the fear that they will thing. disappoint yeah. the audience is growing on Sean and the team. Um, I, I worry about, like, disappointing people. Upon release, all of these clips are seen as proof that Sean is a liar. And what doesn't help is his body language. I mean, it's kind of the body language of someone who is lying. Yeah. And this is why I mentioned he's an introvert. Mm -hmm. Remember, he's a technical lead. Actually, a really good one. But not a salesman. Cut him just a little bit of slack, because this is simply how he talks. Here are some innocuous questions, and he answers them honestly. Uh, lead producers on uh, No Man's Sky? Yeah, I guess I'm a, I'm a developer on it. I suppose the, uh, <laughs> yeah, creator or something like that. <laughs> no, uh, I, I really like making games. I don't necessarily love talking about it. <laughs> I think you, you did a good even, job, even though, though Even though, you know, you guys are very nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Same body language. And Jesus Christ, they have him up on stage and in front of cameras and bright lights and on the goddamn Colbert Report. <laughs> Try keeping a nerve on that. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, free of that context, the clips have him cemented in the community as a liar. So the graph plays out right to release. And that graph, it's actually a track. And that track is what the hype train runs on. <laughs> so it comes barreling up the hill. Instead of neatly pulling into the station, it comes crashing right through the roof. The disaster unfolds. They are absolutely shit on. So there were Sean and Hello Games, surrounded by the rubble of their former reputation. Punish Sean was at his lowest point hated by the majority of the gaming community. But they were still alive, and they had made tens of millions of dollars. They were left with two choices. 
Take the money, start a new project, and be a pariah, a cautionary tale of the industry and hated by the gaming community forever. Or pick themselves up, get back to work, and with potentially no profit motive, finish the game. It allowed me to do something that I've always done in difficult times, whether it's crappy bosses that I've dealt with before or crappy situations at school growing up. I got my head down, I sat in front of a computer, and I made games, which is what I enjoy. They picked number two. Good. <laughs> so, here's the plan. The team is assigned to fixing bugs and the most obvious problems. Go. Sean tells the team to stop reading all the overwhelmingly negative feedback on the game, and he reroutes all of it to his personal devices. Emails, oh. forum posts, Google News alerts, player feedback, it's all going directly to him now. Then he yeah. starts breaking that down into data sets. People who haven't bought the game, people who have bought it and played it for 100 hours, people who have returned it, etc. Then he starts compiling those complaints into usable data, focusing on the people with the most sincere experience of the game. Good, then okay. we'll start making a big laundry list of all the things that need adding and prioritizing. First thing to fix is that full inventory. Then community mod support. Then a third thing, etc, etc. This is going to take an enormous amount of work to pull off, and they're not going to make the same mistake twice. So they would need to sharply adjust their PR strategy. Something else. Anything they said right now, an admission of guilt. I've made a severe. Would be met with criticism. Denial. It's not that bad. Would be met with criticism. Corporate speak. Well, we endeavored to make the best game we could, and we are proud of what we have. Would be met with criticism. Half of the problems have been caused by speaking too much. So they were going to do a complete 180. Instead of adding more fuel to the fire, instead of accidentally promising fixes that might also not be delivered, <laughs> they wouldn't speak to the press again. Female traits you're talking about, I'd say that's a generalization, but you can... They were going to speak to the community directly from now on. So they told the audience they were working on it and went completely silent. One day passed. No word. Two days. A week. Have you heard from Hello Games? They just had this disastrous release. Nope, haven't seen them. I hope they're working on the game. Two weeks. Dude, are you working on this thing? <laughs> just ignore them, just work. Three weeks. Okay, what the fuck is going on? WTF, it's locked. A month. They took the fuck money and ran, <laughs> didn't they? Didn't say anything, it's not gonna help. Two months. Three months. By now, most people were convinced that the game was abandoned. They had made their money. It's all over. Then, after over a hundred days of absolute silence, a tweet. Foundation. The first big patch. It is me, Sean. <laughs> No, go away, Sean. I am mad at you. It has been too long. <laughs> but I bring you gifts. This accent sucks. It brought base building, new game modes, farming, cats, and freighters, as well as a lot of bug fixes. You will have to try harder than that, Sean, to win my love back. <laughs> it still fell well shy of the promised game. Too little, too late. So Sean left returned to his team and got back to work. Wow. A few more months went by. And then another tweet. Pathfinder. What do we have here? <laughs> oh. What the fuck? Oh, it's usual. I bring you online base sharing, own multiple starships, starship specialization, multi-tool specialization and classes, <laughs> permadeath modes, vehicles you can drive around in, and create racetracks for them too with time trials. Look at this. Okay, that's pretty good, but I'm still mad, and there's still a ton promised that isn't in the game yet. So Sean went away once more. A few more months went by. Knock knock. 
Oh, it's you, Sean. What is it now? I bring you an overhaul to the storyline. New worlds, crashed freighters, space combat, terrain editing, portals, procedural mission system, interstellar trading, and joint exploration. By now, people were really starting to warm to No Man's Sky again, and to Hello Games. The game has in many ways exceeded what was promised. It's a substantially better game now. <laughs> no Man's Sky is back, baby! <laughs> people saw this was an honest effort to fix the game, and the number of employees working on it was growing from a studio of 15 to 25. Sean Murray and Hello Game social media also started becoming more active and engaging with the audience. The subreddit was flourishing once more. The price of the game secondhand on Amazon, eBay and GameStop was going up. Then a few more months went by. Next, a really big patch. <laughs> To be super clear, No Man's Sky is not fuck that. Here's the full and proper multiplayer experience. Ringed planets, third person mode, character customization, a galactic atlas on an external website for the community, vast overhauls to base building and crafting and resources, and it also brought the game to Xbox. In fact, with the release of Next in July 2018, No Man's Sky was the sixth top selling console game for the month. It climbed its way back That's into bad. Steam's top 10. It reached nearly 100,000 concurrent players. It brought another $24 million across all platforms. The <laughs> Steam rating went from mixed to very positive. People were getting back on board in a big way. But they weren't done yet. Better creatures, weird underwater shit, oh, discoveries and bases yeah. and environments and equipment, and it keeps going. New biomes, more diversity, archaeology, more things to discover. By now, Sean and the Gaming Inspector personification of the gaming community had literally patched things up and were making out on the couch. <laughs> Which was when he released his biggest patch to date. Oh this video. Oh my God, it's Free VR support. Not a whole other game you have to pay for, like some titles. Mm. Overhauls to NPCs, tech trees, base building, streamlined multiplayer, ride animals around. All sorts of stuff that was never promised in the first place. And they're still adding this stuff. Someone at Valve, who was a fan of the game, said to me, what you do now is more important than what you say. There is only one thing that's credible, and that's your actions. In fact, I was so yeah. slow to get this video out that they put out another patch the other day. With ship salvaging, <laughs> ship upgrading, more advanced terrain editing, first person exocrafts, improved VR, improved base building and inventory management, and quality of life stuff. It goes on. Is it perfect? Uh, technically, <laughs> there are still things on this spreadsheet missing. But come on now, we're starting to nitpick. Especially when you compare them to relationships with other games companies. They could have gone the route of Fallout 76, paywall mods with Fallout first, charging a monthly fee, a downward spiral more and more into pay to win scraps released without QA testing. But instead, they never added pay to win. They never added microtransactions or paid DLC. They never made VR as a second game. They didn't give up on the game or scale their resources back to do it. They didn't come out and call all gamers entitled. They didn't add loot boxes. They didn't start work on the next big project or sequel. They didn't do much of anything except get back to work. And just like that, the game once panned by critics now had awards rolling in. Wow. Your developed star 2019, No Man's Sky. And then they accept it. Sure, Murray. No Man's Sky next. <laughs> they hope they had a <laughs> No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky is next. No Man's Sky. And to cap it all off, the subreddit, Our No Man's Sky the Game, even got together and pulled money for a GoFundMe to have a billboard installed near the Hello Games offices. Aww. Wow. It must have been a harrowing moment for Sean and the team. They took a huge risk to start a small studio. They clawed their way up to create one of the most notable games of the console generation. Disappointed pretty much everyone with the release and took one of the biggest online beatings in video game history for it. <laughs> the family post-release, we faced uh, some really difficult challenges. Everything that you can imagine from like the worst of the internet 
we hit. But then over the course of the next three years, completely turned it around and came out the other side with a win. It's the underdog story. And after doing all of this research, I couldn't help but come to the conclusion that they were the good guys. Jay! So what is the future for Hello Games? In 2017, they announced Hello Labs, a support program focused on original titles and games using procedural generation. Two of the team also branched off to work on a small title called The Last Campfire. Hmm. But for the foreseeable like future, kind of they're just working on No Man's Sky. I'm fucking announcing you again the moment this video goes live, I just know it. <laughs> I didn't want to finish the video on like a big sappy note. So <laughs> this is the end of the story, but there's still another few minutes. Don't leave. It's not an ad. <laughs> okay. In 2015, when the hype was at its peak, someone wrote a Sean Murray erotic fan fiction. <laughs> and naturally, I assumed that you lot would want to see it. Oh my God. So here it is. <laughs> my evening interview at Hello Games. I arrived at the Hello Games office in the early evening as the sun was approaching the horizon. Taking a deep breath, I nervously pressed the doorbell. <laughs> the door opened, and Sean poked his expressive face out to greet me. Hey you, he exclaimed in his adorable British-Australian accent. I'm so happy you could make it and spend the evening with us. I was so happy when I heard you agreed to let me come in for an interview, I said. Oh yeah, the interview. I forgot. He replied with his usual brilliant humor. <laughs> I laughed. He's so funny, Sean. Let me show you my office. I have a surprise for you, Sean said. He led me to the room where we sat down on a soft vinyl couch. So let me show you the surprise, he said softly. It's the newest build of the game. We just added some new features. He booted up the game on a PS4 in his office. I stared at his face. <laughs> I, I like your beard. It's sexy. I pretended to say <laughs> my head to myself. I had a secret crush on him. There was something about his humble demeanor and feeble yet handsome bone structure that was so alluring. <laughs> so here's the game, he said eagerly. It opened on an alien world just calling out to be explored. I began to sweat. Here it finally was in front of me in all of its glory, and it was being played by Sean in front of me in all of his glory. <laughs> I nervously spoke. Could I try playing? I said. Oh, I suppose, of course, he said, chuckling. But another few minutes passed without him handing me the controls. <laughs> Sean, I said more confidently. I put my hands on his hands as he gripped the controller. <laughs> he looked me straight in the eyes. I stared deep into his beautiful, glistening eyes, utterly transfixed. Sure, he said. He let go of the PlayStation controller, still sweaty from his firm grip. Oh. But I have another <laughs> surprise to show you. He stood up. <laughs> my... Redacted. He oh. Yes, please, I said, blushing as ready <laughs> Rushing <laughs> as red as the treetops of Aurea 5. <laughs> he grabbed my shoulders, guiding me confidently towards the coffee table <laughs> like he confidently guides the Hello Games oh team my towards God. the game's release. The one true Sean Murray, <laughs> not that baby-faced loser asshole poser from NCR. <laughs> <laughs> made sweet, sweet love to me. <laughs> I wasn't sure what I was more excited about. <laughs> Finally. Redacted. <laughs> or finally playing No Man's Sky. <laughs> After exploring the planet's surface, I entered my spaceship and took off. Just as I left the atmosphere and burst into the, the breathtaking expanse of space. Redacted. <laughs> oh my god. It was world experience. Oh my god. <laughs> then the story got overly graphic. No, oh, and a bit boring. Oculus Rift support, he uttered sensually. <laughs> As I turned, I saw Sean's avatar standing before me in a beautiful, procedurally generated <laughs> space. Like what you see, he said. It's time, everybody, he shouted. I heard footsteps slowly enter from the cramped office. I soon saw many spacesuits appear before me in game. But as they took off their helmets, I realized that they were all the same Sean Murray avatar. I was about to be redacted by a group of Sean Murray's, <laughs> but they all had one difference. 
the pig. Redacted. <laughs> Redacted. That's different. There were wide ones, thin ones, oh long my ones, God. curved ones. It was magical. As the Hello Games team began to... Redacted. From somewhere in the room, I heard Sean whisper, every... Redacted. Procedure. <laughs> Also, I did a thing on the second channel. Please do check it out. I thought it was quite good. I was like, I love the videos on the second channel. It's some erotic fan fiction over there. So I to check it out. And that's it. Sorry, it took so long. Wow. What a great way to end that uh, video. That was that was very well done. The whole video was 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 fantastic. What did you think? I love the story. I love the telling of it in, in two different sides. Yep. Um, because... You know, when when they talked about how, like, it would be assumed that Sean Murray was, like, this evil guy who was just out to screw mm -hmm. the audience to get the money and everything. There obviously are villainous people in the world who are like that. Yeah. But most times it's a lot more complicated and we only get one side of the story if it's through, like, public coverage in some fashion. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was uh, an incredible kind of comeback story. I mean, the way that they outlined this, the timeline of events and... The fact that like Sony was just putting Sean Murray out there kind of like, I'm not surprised that Hello Games didn't know better or have a PR firm being yeah. a young company that they were and just a startup. But like Sony should know better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, like Sony, I would think if anything was like, we'll lend you some PR support. I, I would think, yeah. you know, since they've kind of gotten it vested interest in in this as well. So I thought it, it was very well done. I... I'm very impressed by Sean Murray and his team that they just got to work. And I think what really shocked me was Sean's ability to absorb the toxicity of the internet. Yes. And be like, okay, I'm going to compartmentalize this. I'm going to, to go through the ones that are relevant and I'm going to hear my fans and I'm going to figure out what it is that we need to do to make it better. Because um, I think anybody who has spent any time on the internet at some <laughs> point in their life has glimpsed a sliver of how toxic it can be. Um, and people will say things to people online that they would never in a million years say to them in person, because at least in person, they know that it would be horrific mm -hmm. for him to be able to just streamline that all to his devices and take it and create something constructive from it is I think a, a real testament to his character, and I say bravo. Yeah, um, very well said. I think that, uh, so this is the first time we've checked out anything from the Internet Historian, and yeah. really enjoyed it. The, yeah, the definitely. video was, uh, a lot of work went into it. I like how it was crafted, because at the end of the first one, when it talks about like the fan experience side of things, uh, you know, at the end of it, he's like, he's like, he's like you kind of feel sorry for these guys by the end of it. And you said you did, and then I was like, well, yeah, I mean, I, I don't want them to get death threats. I think that's like bullshit, but he did promise a lot of things and like didn't didn't deliver, but then yep. he took you on the other side of the story, you know, the other side of the coin. The So there's so many different lessons in here. One, there's the lesson of know your role <laughs> and know what you're good at. And that was something for Sean to know that like he is a developer. That is what he likes to do. That is what he's good at. That's what, you know, his strength is. He's not a, he's not a PR guy, he's not a spokesman. Um, so, you know, had you, if you realize your strengths and also identify your weaknesses, it can help out in, in, in avoid a lot of different, uh, problems. And like, you know, had he had maybe, uh, the, um, I don't know if it's courage is the right word, but to say to Sony, like, look, I'm not the right person for, for this job. I don't feel comfortable doing this. Like I'm better used in this developing and working on this game while you guys hype it up or whatever. Like, and I'll tell you like, you know, whatever things are, are going on there. It's a good point. Cause he was taken out of actually working on the yeah. game to go on this media circus. Yeah. And so um, I think that's one of the lessons. Another one is that you don't always know what's going on in someone else's life. And so it's like really hard to, to we're all also quick to pass judgment on um, other people. Um, yeah. You know, that person cut me off in traffic. Oh, that person's an asshole. It's like, well, maybe that person's rushing to the hospital. They're like, you know, or maybe they are an asshole. Or, you know, <laughs> it could so, go either way. Yeah, you know, and maybe they're not rushing to the hospital. Maybe they're just like, you know, they didn't see you or, or something like, like, you just don't know until you get to the other side, other side of the story. And uh, so like, you know, information is key and crucial as well. And making sure you get like enough information before you make a judgment. One thing I've, I've kind of realized in sort of like the evolution of, of my own life is when you're struggling, 
it is very hard to have the capacity for things like generosity and kindness and going above and beyond if like you are mm-hmm. struggling to the point of I don't know where my next meal is coming from. Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to have a job tomorrow. I don't know if my family's going to be safe and healthy like when and there was a whole article about society as a whole and like when people are struggling financially the the ripple effect that that has on their own psychology and their their well-being in life as a whole um and it's not just oh well maybe they're not affording their fruits and vegetables it's like no there is a toxicity to struggle that can really permeate through you so like yeah that person who cuts you off in traffic might not be rushing to the hospital but it might be that they are just so in the bubble of like oh my god how am i going to survive the next 24 hours for whatever reason that that might be mm-hmm. for them that they're not even able to recognize that there is another car that they just cut off. And so, you know, the, the speaking of not knowing what's going on in another person's life is really important to take in, into mind and to kind of like absorb that concept because none of us ever really know. And especially on yeah. social media where like everybody's projecting the perfect life, but like if everybody had the perfect life, you wouldn't have so many problems in the world. True. Some other lessons I took away from this was actions speak louder than words. Yes. Um, I really was, uh, it was really great how they didn't make excuses. They didn't um, try to, you know, do any kind of spin or anything like that. They just decided to, nope, okay, we got we to fix this. What are the problems? We got to go ahead, we got to fix this. And that's cool that they did that because it really showed the the care that they have for their the community and like for the people that, you know, that for, for the gaming community. And they wanted to give the best possible experience they could and then they knew that this what they the product they put out there wasn't that wasn't that and they could improve upon it um and so uh, another thing is like you know don't give up don't give up on what, on what you believe in because things are going to get hard and it's going to get difficult um but if you really strongly believe in something you know and you are i don't know pure of heart and <laughs> then you can succeed. And it doesn't always sound as the case that you'll succeed. I think it was maybe Mike Ditka that said like, the only time you fail is when you give up. I just think that the perseverance, I was really inspired by them. Um, and just like the dedication to to their product and to realizing their, their, their vision. And you said it spoke volumes of how they feel about the gaming community. And I would just kind of jump on that band, bandwagon to say like, if they'd gone out and said like, whoa, no, we didn't mean to, or like we intended this, or we we yeah. were, were planning that. That's all ego and preservation of their image. Mm-hmm. And they didn't bother with that. Like they're being trashed online for their silence, but they're working so diligently for the fans who are currently trashing them for that silence because they respect what the fans want and they mm-hmm. respect the complaints that they didn't deliver and know that there's re- like legitimacy to those complaints. And so they got right back to it and they just stuck their head down and went. And that's also where I think to kind of go back to your first thing, Sean recognized what he does best, which is I don't do the PR best. I don't do the press best. I do this best. I develop. And that's what I'm going to do because that's what the fans deserve. And then I think the final thing which you kind of touched on was like how Sean got all of the negative feedback to himself and filtering that. Like, and that's what you kind of got to do with just life in general and like, okay, what negative feedback are you getting? Like, who are you getting it from? And then, and also like the motivation behind that. Obviously I give more weight to what Bethany thinks than to what, you know, some random person online is gonna think, or like, you know, maybe even like my my, my coworkers uh, uh, think, you know, it's just because she knows me so well and like, you know, her, her opinion is what I, what I care about and the person that I, like, I, I want to make happy, so. Feedback from there is gonna is gonna mean more than from you know from from somebody else. Whereas like if you just take in all the negative feedback or all the good feedback from that, that comes your way without really filtering it through and, and thinking of um, how how, the, how this helped me like you know improve my life or improve you know what what I what I need to work on in life or like how all this helped me yeah just kind of like cope like so you just need to blocking out a lot of the noise and focusing on what matters is uh, is what I was impressed with uh, again for that Sean did there. Are- two sort of like phrases or like memes or things that I've seen that come to mind with what you're saying, which is one of them is, if you're not gonna think about it in five years, don't give it more than five minutes. (laughs) That's good, I've heard that before. That's easy to say, and that's not exactly going to be something Mm -hmm. that you can fully adhere to. 
But sometimes just reminding yourself of a phrase like that can help to put things in perspective like, oh my God, I'm so mad this person cut me off. Am I gonna think about the person who cut me off five years from now? Is it worth getting so worked up and upset about? Yeah. Is it worth making myself look bad by doing something stupid, like flicking them off or, or trying to speed up past them? Or mm -hmm. like, like all of those things are taking from a negative and creating more negative instead of ending the cycle and being like, this is not, yeah. the priority right now. And then, oh goodness, the other one I just, oh, <laughs> the other one was don't take criticism from someone you wouldn't ask for advice. Like if this person is not within your orbit enough that you respect and value their opinion to ask for advice, mm -hmm. then taking all the criticism that they might send your way is probably disproportionate to what they deserve in terms of your time and attention. These are obviously phrases and it's not something that's like the hard and fast. I think Sean, turning the feedback he was getting from people he didn't even know and making mm -hmm. it into something constructive was great. But I think for those of us who don't run a gaming company <laughs> and who, who are interacting with like millions of angry fans online, yeah. um, I think having sometimes those thoughts just to kind of like check yourself and be like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm spending so much time being anxious over the opinion of this person, but why? Is it somebody whose opinion really has weight with me or is it not? And perhaps I should consider the amount of time I give to it accordingly. And you know, that's what we try to do with this channel too, because like there, there are a lot of times you get negative comments on, on videos. And so those people just kind of block out, like, you know, block them from the channel. It's just like, if you just came here to say fake reaction, uh, then okay, like why am I, what, like, why do I care about that? Like you're not offering any anything. Like I'm not gonna try to tell you like, like oh no, 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 this, this was a real reaction. Like this is the first time we've seen this. Like we don't do fake reactions. Like I'm not gonna try to explain shit to you. Like this is like all you came here to do. Clearly you hate reaction videos. Um, or just wanna like, you know, just wanna say shit, like, you know, just start shit up. Like you're a troll or, or pro probably. Or be negative to other members of our community, yeah. which we take super seriously. Exactly. Um, whereas other people, you know, sometimes might say something that it, it might, you know, it's a negative of the channel, but it's like, okay, you know what? That's something we can use and can build off of. Like, you know, that's something we can, we can, we can improve of, we can improve on. Um, and you know, it might just be one person's opinion, even though I don't know this person. And you know, maybe like this first time, they must be, maybe it is the first time they've commented or seen a video, but like, okay, I can see what they're saying here has some sort of value to like make the channel better, like make what we're doing better. Well, and there's also things like, sometimes what we touch on has like strong social relevance to now, or there's yeah. social commentary. And it's like, there is, one of the great things about being alive in the time that we're, we're all alive right now is that there is a lot in society. There yeah. are culture clashes and shifts. There's diversity of opinion. There's a, a whole bunch of exposure and, and recognition of things like privilege and how you can be insulated from other perspectives because of that. So it's very helpful often to get sometimes those constructive feedbacks, not toxic feedback, mm -hmm. but constructive feedback, because yeah. then we can go, wow, like we are are in the bubble of our existence and our personal perspectives mm -hmm. and the exposure that we've had in our lives. And we haven't been exposed to this before and didn't think of that. Yeah. So like it helps to broaden us and that being open to that is what really helps because that's how we learn new ideas and discover new things and makes life a lot more exciting than the cookie cutter way it could be otherwise. Of course, it's always easier said than done. I mean, there are yeah. times when like, I'll be reading through the comments and it'll be like a hundred, like, you know, really positive, great comments. And then there's that one negative comment. And like I said, it's that one negative comment that you focus on and you're just like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy here to hear to sit here and like, you know, gleam a lot of uh, life advice from this video and also, you know, talk about it, but then it's, not, it's a lot harder to, to enact it. Practicing what you preach is always gonna be tougher than the preaching. Yeah, for sure. But this is really great. I uh, always love the great discussions. Uh, I always love a video that gives us great things to talk about afterwards. And great. so, um, very well done. Looking forward to checking out more stuff from uh, the internet historian. So let us know down below in the comments what you thought about this video and other videos to check out that you might have recommendations for. Thanks so much for watching our reaction for the good ending of No Man's Sky, but just keep in mind. That our reaction is definitely not definitive. Thanks for suggesting this. Yeah.